Today on the channel, guys, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to get your youth soccer team to build out of the back. So let's go. I've had a few emails and people reach out to me asking how I get my teams to build out of the back. And I do have this on the channel, but it's a bit fragmented in different places. So I really wanted to make this video to put everything together. We're gonna to start by assuming that you have a new U9 or U10 team and that you're learning to build out of the back and you wanna build out of the back. As some people know, I have four main elements of my training session and I have a video on that. But just to review, the first is 3v3 or 2v2 small-sided games and I'll do that for about 15 minutes. The second is rondos and sometimes I do those split with a four goal game. So I might do a 4v0 or 4v the coach with four players and then have my other six players if I have, if I have 10 playing a 3v3 four goal game, uh, especially if you have an assistant coach, that's helpful. The third portion of the training session is pattern choreography, building to a positional game. So this is where I really focus on building out of the back at first uh, with, with my new teams or my younger teams and progress it on to attacking patterns and finishing. The last portion of the training is typically uh, a form of a, a small sided game uh, that is either a four goal game or a two goal game um, or, or we'll just play with some sort of conditions. But let's focus on building on the back. So whatever your formation is, you're gonna start by putting players into spots they either typically play or positions that you think they could play. For 7v7, you have a U9 team, U10 team. I play a 2-3-1, so that's two center backs, three midfielders and a striker. So what I would do is you set up the field with cones in those spots and two goals up around the half line. The positioning of the cones is important because that's where you want them to be in the build out. So your center back needs to be deep and on the 18. Your full backs or your wings, I always tell at the 77 level to be where the build out line and the touch line meet, start high. Your center midfielder needs to drop and be right around the arch so he can start to support the attack. And your striker needs to be high up the field tendency is for the strikers to come down. So where you set up these cones is important and it starts to get the idea of where their positioning should be on build out right away. Once the team gets more comfortable with where they're supposed to be positioned, you don't actually have to put cones down. They can just stay in their spots. But to begin, I always start with the cones so they know where they're supposed to be. So the players are now going to be put in their spots on their designated cones. If you have extra players to start when we're going seven against zero, you'll go ahead and have them sit to the side and switch out each time. In particular, I like to do this at the wing and striker positions to start, because if you've seen any of my other videos, the two, three, one, the two center backs and the center midfielder have to be the most important players. But you could certainly sub out at those positions as well. And as you start moving kids around or you have backups in certain spots, you're gonna wanna do that. The other thing I like to do when we first get started is to add mannequins. And if you don't have mannequins, you could always just use sticks. But this gives them some element of obstacle to move the ball around. So the placement of the mannequins is important here. You're going to want to have resistance for the two center backs, as well as resistance for the two full backs or wings as they're bringing the ball up the field on these build out patterns. If possible, I also like to have one in the center of the field so the striker gets an idea of pockets of space that they have to get into and defenders that they might have to get in front of as we're building out. We're gonna introduce the four common build out patterns that I start with. And I would start slow with these guys. So you're gonna do pattern number one, perhaps at your first practice. And then second practice, you're gonna do pattern number one and then maybe do a little bit of number two, but mostly working on a number one and you're slowly introducing. I would not do all four of these uh, right away. Uh, you might not even get to the third and the fourth one until you're a couple weeks into doing some of this pattern choreography. Pattern number one begins with the ball going from our goalkeeper to our center back. The fullback on that side comes down to support. The center midfielder comes over to support. The striker begins sliding over to that side and the center back and the fullback on the opposite sides begin to slide over. The center back is encouraged to take his space until encountered by opposition, which here is the mannequin. Our center back plays the ball to the supporting fullback who takes his space forward. 
The center back on that side is now the supporting option behind. The center midfielder has come into space between defenders and our striker is starting to move over into a beyond space. The center back and the fullback on the opposite side again continue to come with the attack. You just have to be careful that they don't come over too much. What I normally tell the opposite center back and the opposite fullback is you can't come over more than halfway of the field. Once the fullback takes his space and is engaged by the mannequin, the ball is played into our center midfielder. He then plays a the ball to our striker who scores in the goal. The positioning of the striker in relationship to the center midfielder is important here. They can't be directly in the same line. The striker has to give at least a 45 degree angle to the center midfielder. Once you've taken that pattern down one side of the field, you'll go ahead and do it to the other side. You'll have lots of balls in the goal and the ball always restarts from our goalkeeper. So as you start to do these patterns, there's gonna be a couple things you'll notice. Initially, you're gonna to have to do a lot of position correction and it's gonna be slow. However, as they start to get familiar with the patterns, you're gonna to wanna to encourage the speed to get faster. Also, you've gotta encourage them to get their head up and scan. Even though they know where the ball's gonna go in each particular pattern, we still wanna encourage them getting their head up, scanning. Also, communication. Try to get them to talk to each other, to ask for the ball. They know where the ball's going, get them in the right position to receive the ball and move forward. Pattern number two starts similarly to pattern number one with the ball going from our keeper to our center back. The center back then takes his space and plays the ball again out to his fullback. The fullback on that side then takes their space, plays the ball to our center midfielder, where here we play a one-two ball out into the wide space for the fullback, who then plays it to our striker who scores. This would again then get repeated out the opposite side with players switching into positions as needed. Again, the emphasis here coaching wise is on spacing and how we support the attack in our pattern number two. Pattern number three is a switch. So it starts the same way as the other two patterns with the ball going from our goalkeeper to our center back who then takes his space and plays it to the fullback. The fullback then takes his space but realizes that the space is closed by the defenders in front of him. So he plays it to his supporting center back, who then plays it to the goalkeeper, who switches field to our center back on the other side. That center back then takes his space, plays it to his full back, and we get out the other side by playing to our center midfielder and again, again, up to our striker. This is again repeated on the other side. And again, the coaching points here are spacing and how we support the ball carrier. And this is a really important one for switching field because players at this age are very reluctant to do this. For build-out pattern number four, you will have to move the mannequins or training sticks slightly. Here we're encouraging a direct ball from our center backs to our striker. The pattern starts the same as always with the ball being played to one of our center backs. They then go forward, get their head up, and see that the striker has got himself in a very dangerous beyond position. From here, a ball is played directly into our striker. It's very important the positioning of the striker here. The back has to be to the defender and they can't turn into them. Against live defenders, it's very common in the younger ages for your striker to just turn directly into that player or let the ball keep rolling by them without getting a touch on it. From here, the ball is played to the fullback who has come to support the striker and the fullback plays it directly back to the striker to go back into the goal. This is again repeated back and forth from one side to the other, going through this pattern choreography against no opposition. To recap our patterns, number one is finding the center midfielder. Number two is a one-two ball with the center midfielder and the fullback. Pattern three is a switch, and pattern four is finding a direct ball to the nine. Once you've done the pattern choreography for maybe 10 minutes or so, you're gonna move on to a positional game. So from seven against zero and the pattern choreography, you're going to transition to adding defenders. So initially one defender, then you can add two defenders and ultimately get to three, four, and five. And what you do is the team in possession, the blue team here goes to the small goals. And if the defenders win the ball, then they go to the large goal. All you're doing here is now applying a realistic situation 
to the pattern choreography. What I'll do is make a game of it. So have them play to a certain number, like first to three goals wins. If your team starts to get really good, you can put conditions in, like you have to switch the field. The additional thing you can do is you can take the goals away and play possession. So you still use the, the half of the field and you say, okay, the team that's in possession, you just have to keep possession or or if you string together three passes, it's a point, and the defending team, if they get the ball, they still go to goal. Each time the ball goes out of bounds or there's a goal, you reset and restart with the goalkeeper. If you commit to doing this every single training session for 20 to 30 minutes, starting with our pattern choreography, transitioning into a build-up game, as I just showed, your teams will be able to build out of the back in no time, but you have to commit to it. If you guys have any questions about any of this, feel free to leave it in the comment section or contact me directly. And as always, thanks so much for watching.